$550 hairs. That's a lot of money. Hi, beautiful. Today, we're doing another Dyson Airwrap review. Three years it's been since I first reviewed the Dyson Airwrap. And I honestly, when I found that out, I was like, where does time go? We don't need to go any faster. Anyways, you came here probably because you want to know if I like this gadget three years later. My first review, I felt indifferent towards the item. I liked it on one hand. On the other hand, it definitely had some beef with it. I couldn't quite get the hang of it, but it has been a really long time and I've been using it for years now. So things have definitely changed. Maybe not all things, but certain things that I used to think about it have now changed. So we're gonna dive into this $550 Dyson Airwrap and figure out if you should really invest your money in this or if it's just another tool that's gonna sit in your drawer and collect dust. Let's figure it out. Ah, uh, the Dyson era. Obviously, it comes in this beautiful box and it's just so satisfying to open. Ooh, look at that. We're looking at a lot of things in this. So let's break it down. Right here, we have our pre-styling dryer. This takes your hair from wet to damp, so it's ready to start styling with the barrels or the brushes. This round brush with fine bristles direct air deep into the hair to give body, creating tension to shape hair as it dries. Now we have this soft smoothing brush, which creates a smooth, straighter style with a soft ball tip bristle engineered to be gentle on the scalp. And moving on to the firm smoothing brush. These firm bristles are made to smooth and control for a straighter style with less frizz and fewer flyaways. Next, we have the two 1.6 inch air wrap barrels. This creates loose bouncy curls or waves with clockwise and counterclockwise barrels for symmetrical curls. And then we have the 1.2 inch air wrap barrels, which are a little bit smaller. And these ones create volumized curls and waves with clockwise and counterclockwise barrels for symmetrical curls. And then of course, right here, we have the actual thing that directs the air into these different tools that you attach onto this machinery. So now that we saw what each tool comes with the kit, I wanna give you my honest opinions about each tool. Are you ready for that? We're gonna start with my favorite attachment and then go down to the least favorite attachment. My favorite attachment, this baby right here. Oh my God. This is the 1.2 inch air wrap barrel. It makes sense. The air directed around with the arrows, it works really great. It gives awesome curls to the hair. She's quite honestly that bitch, so. We're gonna go with the 1.6 inch air wrap barrel next. This is my second most favorite. The same reasons as the other one. My only complaint is that it doesn't really like hold much of the curl or the wave. It's more for just volume. Don't think you're gonna get like curly hair out of this. And if you do, it'll probably drop in like an hour. Um, but it's all around a great tool. My next favorite is the round volumizing brush. These bristles, really smooth out the hair and give you that really shiny, glossy, fresh out of the salon kind of blowout. That's all I ever want in life. My only complaint about this one, I just don't love how the air is blown through this and then out every side. Because when you're in the salon and you're getting a blowout, usually we're directing the hair down on the hair and we're not directing it up because when you direct the hair up, you get frizz. So it is a little bit difficult to tame the frizz while trying to get a really nice round brush blowout. But I will say it typically works well, the frizz is manageable, but you know, for an easy to use piece of technology that doesn't require you to have a brown brush and a blow dryer at the same time, I'll take it. Next, we have the firm smoothing brush. I like the firm bristles because I feel like I can pull in the hair more. Getting that tension in there really helps get the hair smooth and straight. It helps get the frizz out. I don't have many complaints. I wish there was sort of a synthetic bore-like material between these plastic bristles. I feel like it would really add a lot of shine and a lot of smoothness to the hair beyond what this can offer. So my second to least favorite would be the soft bristle round brush. I don't think it's horrible. Just because this is my almost my least favorite doesn't mean it's bad. This one, I feel like I can't get much of a grip on the hair. It's really great for just getting that wetness out of your hair. Just brushing through, getting those edges nice and dry. You know, things like that. This isn't gonna pull on your hair. It's gonna be very gentle and it's gonna do the job of getting all that really sopping wetness out um, while detangling your hair. I don't have a lot of use for it. Now, as you probably already know, this one is my least favorite because I already have a Dyson Supersonic and this is just so much less powerful than using my Supersonic to blast the hair dry to like 60% or 70% dry before I then go use the air wrap. I tend to really not reach for this much, but it is good if you don't already have a good blow dryer um, to just get that wetness out of your hair. It's not a bad attachment. I just don't have a lot of use for it. So that is why it's my least favorite. So let me go put a wig on so I can show you guys how I like to use these attachments 
and what things I've learned over the years about each thing. And you're welcome for putting a wig on because you guys always yell at me for doing mannequin hair and not actually doing my own hair, so. <laughs> This is for you. Boom, I'm back. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm obsessed with me having long hair. So over the years, I've kind of gotten a technique down when it comes to drying hair with the air wrap. Let me show you what I like to do. I did in fact just wet my hair down like 12 times. And honestly, this hair keeps on drying. And if your hair is sopping wet, you should definitely go in with this baby right here and get a little bit of that moisture out, okay? Probably like 50% dry. Now we're gonna go in with a firm smoothing brush. And what I like to do with this brush to get a nice, beautiful, sort of wavy hair moment is to really smooth out the roots. I like to keep the ends nice and wet, but really smooth those roots out. And if you didn't already know, a big appeal to buying something like this, there's actually a built-in heat control system in this unit, which regularly the temperature up to 40 times a second so that this does not burn your hair. Except that's a little confusing to me because why is there different heat settings here if we're regulating the temperature every 40 seconds? Just a question. I really don't know the answer to it. There may be a very good explanation for it. I don't understand though. There are three heat settings. It looks like there's cool, medium, and high, um, and then three air blowing settings, which is low, medium, and high, and then off, on, and cool shot. Um, and then this is here for you to clean that out. You should always clean this, by the way. This is how these things break. You gotta clean this out. So I'm gonna be putting this on medium heat right now because I don't want this to dry out too quick. But if your hair is really wet and really thick, please put this on a high heat setting. It's very important. Before actually using the air up, we need to make sure we're putting the right products in our hair. For now, I'll be putting Electric Rain Moisture Cream by me into my hair and my ends because they are dry as hell and they're nasty. And of course, we're gonna be putting in some force field heat shield. And there are some other items that I'm not be putting in this hair, but things that you can use to make your hair so much better when using the air app or any blow dryer because product is so important when you're blow drying. I cannot stress that enough. Let's go in on our roots and just get these nice and smooth. So as you can see already, we're getting volume up here. And what I'm doing is directing the hair in opposite directions of how it lays. So we're getting that nice volume at the root. Now, if your hair is super frizzy, you're gonna wanna really hold the hair and smooth it down like this and push all that frizz to the underneath side of your hair. Again, we're trying to leave the ends damp as well so we can go back and style those later. We have the roots dry and honestly with this wig, I want it to be not voluminous. So I push mine down a lot because if I have volume, it's gonna look crazy and I'm gonna look weird. As you can see, it got the top really nice and smooth up there with very little effort. Over the past three years of watching people do their hair with the air app, I found that a lot of people kind of skip that step where like you need to smooth down the top. If you go directly in with the air wrap barrel, you're gonna still end up with a lot of frizz up here if you don't first smooth it down. You wanna be pushing that air through your hair and pushing all of that frizz downward so that you then have a nice smooth smooth base to then work with the air wrap barrels on. Let's pop that off. We'll get on our 1.2 inch air wrap barrel. So because the arrows on this are pointing this way, we're gonna put this on this side of our head. That way the hair is turned back and away from our face. I'll be putting this on high heat so I get the most out of my curls and the most bouncy curls possible. That is the first curl. Look at that curl. Obviously this is a wig and um, this wig hair tends to really hold shape well. So you might not get the exact same effect if your hair is a lot heavier, but with hair similar to this, that is fine and takes shape well, you're gonna have a good time, okay? And that product is really going to help. I wanna just do a side-by-side -side comparison of how far I've come since doing it the first time. This is me in my first Dyson Airwrap video trying to do the same thing. Obviously, I've learned a lot. It gets so much easier over time. One thing I have to say about this air app is that you might not get it at first, but over time, you start to really understand how to do your hair with it and you get better and better over time. And that's anything with hair really. But you know, there is a bit of a learning curve, even for me. Just don't worry if it doesn't come out great the first time.
I've also really learned over the years that if you go in and out like this, it gives you a lot more tension and really make sure all that hair at the ends is wrapped around the barrel nicely. And honestly, I don't know what happened the first time I used this, but like when I took this much hair, it had such a hard time wrapping around the barrel. But ever since then, I've had a really easy time doing it. We're getting some curls. Now, if you're looking for more of a wave, this is something I've also learned. What you're gonna do, point the air up downwards and wrap the hair around in the direction of the arrows. And this will give you more of a beach wave instead of a curl. So that is the texture I got doing that. As you can see, it's much looser and much more of a relaxed wave than this. So here it is. Here is the after. Here is what happens when you use this baby and then brush it out. It looks so damn pretty. I mean, it really is bouncy and full of volume and still full of life. I love that this gives you so much shine with much less damage than a curling iron. I have definitely learned how to use this a lot better over the years, as you can see. So I wanna talk about some things that I touched on in my three years ago video that I didn't like about the air wrap and we'll talk about if I've changed my mind. It's just not very time efficient. Honestly, it really just depends on your experience level with the air wrap. It also depends on how much hair you have. It can be very time efficient and how much you're getting that moisture up before you then go in with the actual air wrap tool. I think it can be time efficient if you really know how to do your hair with the air wrap properly. So I do sort of retract that in some ways, in some ways not. You know, you're just gonna practice and practice makes perfect, so. It says this one is smoother, straighter styling and this one is for smooth, blow dry finish. I literally have no idea what the difference is. <laughs> It just seems like another random tool thrown in the box. I don't see what the difference is. I don't think I got as many attachments in that original package that I do have now. Like I'm not fully getting like why we have both of these. It seems unnecessary, but that's besides the point. I mean, I'd rather have more than less. It does get really hot though. So be careful with your forehead because it, it burned me a little bit. I still think that's true, but comparing it to conventional curling irons, it does not get as hot as a curling iron. So that is good. You know, I'll take hot, but not extremely hot. Um, so it is gonna be better for your hair, but you know, you're still putting heat on your hair and it's still gonna cause damage. So don't think cause you have the air wrap and you paid $550 for it. It's not gonna cause any damage cause it still is. It was definitely difficult for me to get the hang of it. I'm not sure I have the hang of it yet. <laughs> I've honestly had a really easy time since then. And the first time it just like does take a little bit of hand-eye coordination. Um, and it's a little tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, it actually does work pretty well for thick hair as well. Don't take gigantic sections. A smaller section like this at a time is best. I have watched a few reviews of women with natural hair, curly hair, frizzy hair. From what I could see, it is not the right tool for them. You know what? It's probably not going to be great for you. It's going to take a lot of work to get your hair straight and smooth. If you have very coily 4C hair, it's probably going to be really tough for you to use this product and I don't exactly recommend it. But I don't exactly think they're marketing towards 4C receive type hair. It's not on their packaging at all. You know, I don't know if that's a plus. Obviously we'd love a product for everybody, but sometimes you just can't make a product for every single person. However, I don't know how many people my age are really buying a $550 curling iron set. Is it worth the money? That's really up to you. Obviously you don't need this. It is something that will hopefully make your life easier. But if you don't have the money for this, you can definitely get this look in so many other cheaper ways. Um, it might not be as good for your hair, but this is really a luxury item. And if you can't afford it, I say, why the hell not? It is a fun gadget to have and it is quite useful. So that is how I'm feeling since the last video. And I don't wanna leave you before I give you a few little tips if you are gonna purchase this on how to get the most out of it. Product is so important. I see people not getting good results with this so many times due to the fact that they don't put any product in their hair. Oh my God. You will never walk into a salon where we're not using products for our blow dry. And people always wonder why their hair looks 10 times better after they leave the salon. It's because we know what product to use. I don't know why some people don't like product. It baffles me. Using something like Viper Smoothing Oil to tame those flyaways and moisturize, as well as electric moisture cream, which is a bit of a lighter consistency than Viper, but also gives you that amazing 
amazing smoothing effect and brings back the health of your hair and that shine. This is also great to finish your hair with to get that real good bounce and shine out of your blowout. Oh, this one though. This is electrified volumizing foam. Not only is it good to give you volume, but it's also good to make your style last. It has so many style retention ingredients added into this. So that way when you style your hair, it stays in place. So you can really put this stuff all over your entire head and scrunch it in and then start blow drying and it will help make your style last for so long and your hair will not be all crunchy and nasty from like a stronghold hairspray. And that brings me to hairspray. Hairspray is a great way to help your style hold. Please, if you're okay with having a little bit of that hardness in your hair, spray hairspray over your style after you're all done or before you even do it. You can also spray hairspray in damp hair and then style it. That also works very well. Don't use this at its highest heat temperature setting if you do not have to. Please experiment with the lower settings before going up higher. That way you get the least amount of damage possible. I also hear people complain a lot about their curls dropping. Obviously this is more of a blowout curl. So you are gonna get that more volume, but it is not as strong as a curling iron curl. They do tend to fall flat a little bit faster, but I do think a lot of the reason is because people love to go like this with their hair, right? All day long, even just after they styled it. And you have moisture in your hands. So the more you go like this to your hair, the more the wave is gonna drop out and it's gonna get straighter. So avoid doing that as much as possible and let your hair naturally fall. Though I don't blame you. When I have long hair, all I can do is just play with it. And those are all the tips I have for you today. So three years later, some things have changed, some things haven't, but overall, the Dyson Air Wrap is dope. You guys like to follow me anywhere else here on my social media handles. Also, you can follow my hair care brand and hair color brand, as well as shop below any of the products you saw in today's video, as well as any hair color you possibly desire. That is all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to live your extra life. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.